right, let's get there. The Broncos 26, the Eels 16 uh, in Darwin. Hot evening, but there were some of the uh, decisions that were made. And look, they're in line with what has been happening in recent times. And we'll get to Isaiah about that uh, because all the talk about, oh, do you practice the hip drop? Where does it sit in terms of what a, a footy team inside those four walls, how you guys talk about it, how clearly you understand what the framework is? Because that seems to me, Dave Rickard, to be part of the problem. Do we get it? Do we understand what a hip drop is? Obviously, the old-fashioned two blokes holding another one up and the third one coming in and uh, crashing down on their lower legs seems like a hip drop. With one-on-one, -on -one, the Ezra Mam kind of tackle, that is deemed a, a hip drop. So is it any contact once you've let your gone off your own feet, any contact with the lower legs of your opponent, that's going to get a penalty. Uh, effectively, that's the way I view it. Uh, yeah, there, there, there is certainly some cloud because we know there's cloud because Payne Haas has just been uh, facing a, a one-game suspension and, and wasn't sin binned yep. last night um, for his tackle on Regan Campbell Gillard. The way I read it and the way I'm viewing it is if the, the player loses his feet, loses control of the tackle. Much like any head-high tackle, once once a player loses their feet in the motion of trying to tackle a player, and they collect the player height, they've lost they've lost all control of the tackle. Very similar with hip drops, of which basically I believe if we're to get our heads around this, needs to be eradicated as far as a name is concerned. Just call it a dangerous tackle, because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous tackle that the game is trying to rub out. I feel as though, guys, the game is about to go through some serious pain here to get to the end result, like we have in the past with spear tackles and punching, no more fighting. The game had to wear some bruises. And I think this is the current phase we're going through at this point in time where coaches, players, fans, referees are still working out what what is, what is a clear hip drop, what isn't a clear hip drop, and what... What parameters do we put around this, making sure that this doesn't happen again? Well, suspensions, and that's what's that's a, uh, that's what's unfolding. The weird thing is, under those definitions, something something like the old-fashioned covering tackle, you know, John Raper racing across the field, diving, feet off the ground, taking somebody around the hips and sliding down onto their back legs, which what what happened? That that's a hip drop. Yeah, but they they, they were often tackles made at parallel too. Tone he coming on on the side, uh, yep. you know, a low diving tackle, not 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 all, uh, the way it's been explained to me. Not almost rodeoing. Yes, it's yep. a very much a rodeo style tackle up top, slide down, then for lose your feet and use your the weight of your body to mm. to bring the player down. It, it's lucky that Alan Lang, one of the best players to ever play the games, retired because that's how he used to tackle everyone. Because small guys on big guys, they they need to use their weight as leverage, exactly the way that we saw with Ezra Mann, uh, Ezra Mann last night when, you know, you lose the contact as a little guy on a big guy, an edge back row on a half, and then essentially you end up in a position that you're put in by the collision, and then what you need to do to get that guy to ground is lose your legs, like drop all of your body weight. I, don't, I just don't think there's a way... Um, of, of ever clearing this up, Dave. And, and yeah. the problem with it is, like last night, it really starting to affect the contest. And, yeah, we might wear some bruises, but I think, you know, when it comes to high shots you know, or taking people past the horizontal, you know, it's clear you can actually see when that happens. Sometimes they're incidental, sometimes intentionally, sometimes things go wrong. We get, we get that, but you can actually see it's black or white. I think with this situation, like if you look at the... Um, the incidents last night. Hopgood was defending his line. It was almost a one-on-one -on -one tackle. He went, he actually, you know, came in from the waist and there, I didn't think there was any contact with the lower leg. Payne Haas was exactly the same where he tackled RCG a metre out from his try line. Like there's no other way could have Payne last night stopped a, a man that size, that close to line from scoring a try other than dropping his weight and, and using that as leverage to get that guy to the ground. It's been in our game forever. And I think the NRL have put themselves in a real corner where no one really knows what a what this sort of tackle looks like. You've got but, guys but, that, but are getting, we're, we're, that are getting... They haven't put bin. themselves in a corner because uh, Regan Campbell-Gillard's facing weeks on the sideline. Uh, Keon Kalea Matangi a, a physical is sport, out mate. injured. Injuries uh, happen. They've happened. Isaac you know, Thompson ever since the out game. injured. 
Yeah. To, well, the, the so was the game happened. just supposed to let it go, all well, these injuries? Totally. Well, there's certain things that they can control, and this is a, a, an incident that's just going to happen in the heat of battle. Unfortunately, that's just what it is. All the players, Isaiah Yo knows that none of the none of the um, none of the clubs practice, none of the clubs train for this. Agree. No one's doing it intentionally. No argument. And stuff happens on the field that we just, as a game, can't try and control absolutely everything. Even if and there is now, a duty the of care. Is, we've got contests now like that have been affected on the in real time. And then guys that aren't actually getting, I think they back themselves in the corner of the NRL because now they feel like they need to suspend guys on the back of the sin binning because it was laughable what they did a couple of weeks ago with Preston. And then you've got a blockbuster up here. And then people in the game, the, the Broncos fans that wanted to see, you know, their high-flying team play South Sydney next week up here on Friday night are going to have to do it without Haas and without Mam. All right, Isaiah, what, what's the discussion at your club uh, about this. I mean, this is an attack that just popped out, up out of nowhere. So uh, it's been around, but it, it feels like that, though. It feels brand new. Yeah, it does. It's, I feel like there's definite confusion. I felt like the, as much as Dave was saying, he thought the Jermaine one last night was a big one. I felt like, I felt like that wasn't a hip drop. And I felt like that's a big moment in the game, lose a play like that for 10 minutes when they're already on the back foot. And then once that's done, it's pretty much the game's over. So... I feel like there needs to be an awareness of players, and I feel like you can definitely differentiate the ones that are definite ones that can that are causing injuries, and the ones that are sort of fifty fifty. Like Gers just mentioned them with um, Jacob Preston, the one he was trying to rake the ball a couple of weeks ago gets done for a hip drop. Like, I feel like there needs to be a little bit more common sense. And then even if you feel like it might be a hip drop, well, if it's one of those fifty fifty ones, don't simp in the boat. Like, yeah. put him on report and then make a judgment call later on. Whereas you're you're affecting a game of football where. Like I felt the refs don't even know sometimes. Like they're sort of getting it and then they're getting the uh, word from the bunker. So I just feel like you don't want to be crueling a game of football because you're, you're not sure on a 50-50 call. But, so. the, but the, you're right. And I agree with you. Jacob Preston one was ridiculous. He was trying to rake the ball. But these are the teething problems the game has gone through for, for decades upon decades when rules change. When there are, when there are clamp downs on uh, wanting to protect the welfare of the player. And we've seen it. The, the fabric of the game takes this subtle shift when the game has a responsibility to protect the player. And that's what is happening at the moment, where you are going to get mistakes. Yep. It's happening. And, 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 and until they get a point of everyone understanding what it looks like, there's going to be more mistakes. There's going to be more pain. That's what I was talking about. It's going to go through this frustration period for the for fans. How long does that go for then? So you look at the head, the, the high shot crackdown last year goes for what, six or seven weeks and it sort of yep. falls back to what it was before. So Totally. Like, yeah, I'm just not sure how, how that looks. Well, statistics going to be will thing, show or? that there's less high shots. Yep. So it... it, it you and know, well, however, I, I, you've got someone like uh, RCG now who is going to miss, what, 10 weeks with that kind of level yep. of injury. The game is not going to go and turn around and not penalise and not sin bin, are they? I mean, that's certainly what's happened so far this weekend. I, I just, Tony, I just want them to be able to come out and say, okay, Payne, all right, this is what you should have done. This is how, this is another yep. option. Because when you look at that tackle and you need to bring in fatigue and all those different things, and they might need some sort of master in physics or something, mm -hmm. I don't know. Biomechanics. But biomechanics, but they need to tell the clubs what someone in that situation can do other than just put their hands up and let uh, a guy just run through and score a try because Hopgood was defending his line, Haas was defending his line, and so yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. They've backed themselves in a corner. There's going to be situations, Dave, like when you lift someone up and you put them on their ass and you take them past the horizontal, that's a decision that you make. You can be careless. It can be reckless. It can be a, yep. it doesn't always need to be intentional, but you can see it and feel it and you can stop it. Same as with the high shots. But with this, I just don't know that, that I, I don't know what they're trying to do because well, well, good. physically this has happened in our game forever. Yeah. I, I Hey, look, I, I understand where you're coming from. And, and I agree with you. There, there is going to be accidental pressure on legs during like it's a collision sport it's a contact sport there's going to be moving parts moving bodies uh blokes sliding down on legs there's going to be elements in that and that's what we're seeing we're seeing we're seeing Jermaine Hopgood get off with only a fine it was considered a grade one Isaiah didn't believe it was that significant well the judiciary have also seen it not as significant also these are the this is this is part of the the process of where the game needs to get to to understand what the ultimate outcome will be. But, but it might not just look ask, like what, what, what it what, looks what like. What was the now. initial? What was what was the initial decision? What was the 
Where was the moment where the NRL felt like they needed to crack down on something? This is what I'm saying. They've backed themselves in a corner. Why did they need to crack down on this specific incident? We don't see that much of it. And when we do see it, it happens regularly. It's it's usually incidental. There's not always injuries. Now you've got players that any time they feel any sort of pressure on the back of their legs, they get, they looking like they're playing for Man United. They're going down for a penalty, raising their arms up. They're not injured. They get up and play the rest of the game. Dewey did it last night with the Ezra Mam thing. You know, the, and now it just it creates this whole butterfly effect of, of different things that come out of the back of a situation that, in my opinion... No different that, to crusher tackles, no different to cannonballs. We saw players staying down when that phase of the game went through. No different. This is what we're seeing. It's part... It, this is the this is a shift for the game that we've seen in years gone by with other tackles. You can stop crusher tackles. You, you can, there's, there's, there's other but, no, things that girls, players, players can were still get clutching away, at the back of their neck from. looking for a penalty. They still do. I get that. Yeah, they still do. All right, you, you obviously there's a big bloke going through the line, crashing through the line. You have a lot of little fellas swinging on your back trying to knock it down in that way. I'm not poking my nose through too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, you, I feel like you can you can feel it, and you're right. You, you could lay down. I, I feel like in, in yeah. certain instances, but you know if you're injured or not. So I guess that's where you. But then players are obviously got to play within the rules. If they feel like they can get a penalty and and leg up their team, well, they'll do it. So uh, at the moment, I feel like that's that's the case. I think what the players want, Yoey, is insurance that when they've, because you guys put yourselves in dangerous situations all the time, you bigger guys, you've got generally two guys holding you and that third guy comes in, you don't know where they're coming in, you can't often see them. I think what the players would like is assurance that that third player that comes in isn't one going to come below the knees, which has now been, you know, is illegal, yep. and two, isn't going to drop all their weight and their body weight on the back of their legs, three. So if they if the game can eradicate that, which you don't see that too often now, and that is the hip drop, that's what I thought a hip drop was, well, then there's no problem. Yeah, no, I'm not I, sure what the problem is that they're trying to fix. I, yeah, I totally agree with that. Particularly ones you can't see and you're already wrapped up a couple of, up top. Yeah, I, yeah, I felt that's probably the big one, I reckon. It's, it's the ones where the little blokes are making that, that smaller tackle. There's a man one last night where he needs to do that to take the bloke down. If, if not, what's he got to do? Let go. So that's, that's the hard part. Gerd's raised the question of why. Why now? Where's this come from? And, and it's a really good question. And we spoke, we touched on it a couple of weeks ago about maybe, well, my own personal theory, I don't, I don't have any uh, you know, data, but my personal theory is that the game has shifted to such a high-paced game with repeat sets, six, tack- six agains, that we are seeing so many retreating defenders, so many uh, uh, defensive line where you are, they're often chasing the, the attacking player and coming from at a behind position more so than we've ever seen before due to the fact, due to the speed of the game. Isaiah, do you have any theories on why no. this ca- tackle has come into the game? No, um, I feel like you make a good point. Though. I feel like it's, it's definitely a, uh, a tackle where there's fatigue in the game or you're, you're being desperate. So I guess that you're right, the game's sped up a little bit. There's more fatigue in the game. Line speed isn't as much when it's in that sort of grind football. So I can definitely see um, how that, that could be a point raised. It was a bad tackle. Was it on Hayes Dunster by uh, Dragons game a couple of oh, really? seasons ago? Yeah, with Ter- yeah last Terrell season. Yeah. He's missed the entire year. Yeah, yeah. In terms of triggers, that was certainly one of them. All right, then uh, we've still got plenty to get to. We won't talk about that game. The Broncos 26, the Eels 16. Uh, but we'll do it next via the services of the man himself. Adam Reynolds will join us on the Saturday Scrum. We do it for King G Workwear.